it's just it's just varying degrees of hassle of what you're okay dealing with the older i get the less i'm willing to deal with hassle wise liquid metal it is a metal obviously okay now this metal in liquid form has different interactions with different other types of surfaces okay so and the reason why this even came up was because everyone in the discord has been asking should i put liquid metal on my gpu should i put liquid metal on my cpu ihs should i put it on my die should i put it on um you name it nickel plating you name it all that shit right this this been coming up so we're gonna do a video on this you got aluminum aluminium aluminium <laughs> how, how the brits fucking say it okay you got copper you got um the dye itself silicon right and then you have uh nickel plated copper i don't know if you would ever want to use it on nickel plated aluminum i wouldn't risk that shit but the way that this interacts with all of these are in a different manner okay and the combos of them are in a different manner right so here is my here is my liquid metal usage recommendation for the average noob or for the average pleb which i'm sure most of the people that are going to view this video are the average pleb okay so let's start with aluminum actually this is aluminum just don't do it ever there's fucking it'll just completely destroy it don't do it if there's and there's a, i learned this the hard way too it, even if there's like an aluminum brace behind it so what was it was like a cooler master tower cooler right and like the heat pipes go down like this right these are the heat pipes and the heat pipes are copper right but there was an aluminum fin stack on top like this and then i put liquid metal on it because i'm like it's not gonna go through right the liquid metal literally went through the cracks of the heat pipe and touched the aluminum and destroyed the entire air cooler dude if there's any aluminum anywhere near anything you do not use liquid metal period okay just don't do it just don't do it i learned that the hard way in my young jufus days okay now these three are a little more okay we're gonna have three different scenarios here the die die these are little, we're gonna say um cpu die for now these are just cpu dies we're gonna start with the cpu okay cpu dies right now on this one d for die now we're gonna have i don't know orange for a copper ihs let's say like a rocket cool one okay copper ihs and then we're gonna have blue for uh, the standard stock intel ihs which is nickel plated okay blue for nickel plated and this one is just bare dye okay so these are the three contact surfaces that you would encounter on a cpu die okay okay now up 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 on top you have your cpu cooler okay this is your cpu cooler which like bracket and then down and then bracket this is your cpu cooler with like a hole here and a hole here mounting bracket okay this can be pure copper or nickel plated copper okay so i'm gonna move this over a little bit so we're gonna start with it being nickel plated okay so let's make this blue like this nickel plated cpu block i'm gonna explain what happens on each of these surfaces okay so 
when you put this nickel plated cpu block with liquid metal on a copper ihs it's not recommended for the average noob or pleb it's fine it'll work okay so what happens is you put the you put the fucking the cooler on and then there's liquid metal in, in inside right liquid metal penetrates copper does not penetrate liquid or er, nickel plating right so then what happens is when you have one surface that's nickel plated one surface that's copper and i'm gonna use non-scientific terms here like moist and like watery or dry non-scientific terms okay so it ha the the half half of the liquid metal that's attached to the copper will dry out what's really happening is it's, it's, it's getting absorbed into the porous pores of the copper okay why is that important okay if as long as one of the surfaces is nickel plated and the liquid metal doesn't dry up or get absorbed you're okay you're okay in the sense that it won't the performance won't degrade over time so so let's say example here number one even if the bottom part like let's say this top part of this copper ihs gets dried out with liquid metal the other half on top with like the nickel plating doesn't get dried out so performance stays the same for a long time but when you take this off like when you peel it off the copper ihs all that dried out shit is now left there you have to lap it and sand it back down to the copper again if you want to reuse it if you don't performance is going to be dog shit because all, all of that old left dried out liquid metal is still there i'm going to elaborate that in the future as well it creates hot spots and shit so so example number one here is a good use for liquid metal for moderate to advanced users those that are okay taking the ihs's off and resanding them every time you want to do it which is fine now when you have two surfaces like this which are both nickel plated it doesn't the liquid metal doesn't get absorbed into any of the sides it stays liquidy for a very very long time then when you take it off all you got to do is just fits polish both ends and you're good to go to reapply that shit right so this is obviously the best use case scenario for liquid metal when both surfaces are nickel plated okay okay now when directly on the die where's my mouse here when directly on the die this is the same thing liquid metal doesn't penetrate silicon like the die and that's why where is the purple here that's why liquid metal between the die and the ihs is also fine but what do you think happens on this side between the die and the copper ihs same thing as the top level if you take it off you have to sand the underside of the fucking ihs too it's a huge fucking nightmare it's a massive nightmare so anyway if you do do it this way just don't use liquid metal i mean use it on the bottom seal it and then use paste on the top that's the most um user-friendly way to do it now here is the other scenario i hope that makes sense i might even have a copper right just i can show you replace the ihs with a non-copper one that's just the stock intel one right the stock or or what you can do the stock intel one is nickel plated on both sides you can lap the top so it's copper the underside is still nickel plated you use liquid metal on that shit you never have to worry about it drying up and sanding the underside of it that's the easiest way to do it right just use the stock intel one put liquid metal on both sides and you're good to go that's the easiest way to do it right 
now when it comes to gpus here's another question that came up in the discord okay when it comes to gpus let's say these are your gpu dies right gpu die gpu die there's no ihs on these ones right there's two types of water blocks though there's copper ones and there's nickel plated ones okay it's kind of the same thing as what we just said but it's a little more important to not use liquid metal on the copper ones um here's why okay actually let me do a, a top facing one okay so all the keep in mind all the same problems that we just said right this is the top of your die okay gpu die it's like nvidia fucking tu 102 when you look at the die on your graphics card these aren't like felt like 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 that's not like it's not like a pen on a paper these are like engraved into the silicon so when you can feel it with your fingernail right like the markings on the die so when you use liquid metal it goes into those grooves in the die which is fine no, no, no damage no no harm happens but when you put a copper IH or a copper fucking water block on that die those letters get engraved into the copper up top like it dries out up top right so again not a problem if you never take it off what happens the second you take it off right now imagine this is your water block purple copper now all of a sudden you have like TU 102 120 Nvidia you have the fucking liquid metal letters dried into the fucking copper you have to sand it again yeah and and good luck sanding this to make sure that it's fucking flat right it's not gonna happen you can't get that on a piece of sandpaper right so here's the other problem you also can't just put it back on with fresh liquid metal because these letters that are now dried up on the copper you're never gonna get those grooves perfectly back onto the die you're talking micrometers here like micrometers of it's never gonna happen so now you 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 take these letters that you've dried out on copper you stamp it on a fucking die that has those grooves what have you just done now this is let's say this is the copper block this is your this is your die you're like a millimeter off everywhere you just created a lot of hot spots on your die and there's no way around that without sanding it flat again does that make sense just don't do it never mind all the other pro like cleaning conformal coating the capacitors just you know what i mean just don't do it can't you just get rid of the letters in the first place you have to sand the die down for that right but if it's a nickel plated water block go nuts then it's fine so if it's a nickel plated most of them are nickel plated only the oem ones the oem evga ones are copper right but like that's why i didn't liquid metal that kingpin build i left it with paste because it was copper right if you have a copper water block just don't fucking do it right just don't do it but if it's nickel plated you can just wipe it off fits polish it reapply you're good right have I ever lapped a die? A CPU die I have. Yeah, 9900K. Not a GPU die, no. It's the same shit. Lap is not back anything, right? Um, I think that covers it. So, here, let me... So, nickel plus nickel equals A-O-K -okay for noobs. Nickel plus oh yeah i didn't talk about copper and copper nickel plus copper equals advanced because you have to sand this down every fucking time copper plus copper i just wouldn't bother you can 
You can. You, okay. okay, here's what happens with copper and copper. It's what it's exactly what you think it would be, right? So you got a copper, you got a fucking copper IHS here, right? And then you got a copper CPU block here, right? You put liquid metal in between. Both sides dry out now. And then you also have the problem of them fusing together, right? So this dries out in about a month two months if you're lucky you'll start you'll start seeing your temperatures get worse and worse and worse and worse after about a month two months and then eventually you start crashing and blue screening right you're like i can't use this shit. so then you gotta take it apart now you have to sand and relap both sides now you also have the problem of this being welded together not welded but like it's literally fused together you're ripping this fucking bitch off your motherboard. You're going to break your motherboard in half, dude. That's how strong it is. I'm not even kidding. So sometimes I've had to like put a fucking flathead screwdriver on like the VRM heatsink and like pry up and the entire motherboard is like flexing and shit to try and get this IHS off because you can't undo the latch for the CPU until the cooler comes off. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. If you have copper on copper, just lap them both so they're perfectly flat and just use a good paste, man. You know what I'm saying? Just don't do it. I just don't do it. I used to bother with this, but I got sick and tired of fucking having to send my sh The performance is incredible, though. The performance is incredible for like a month. And then it goes to shit real quick. You know what I mean? Uh, let me catch up here. I thought you can just clean it and reliquid metal. No, it doesn't work, man. I've tried that. I've tried every variation of that. You can't. What you can kind of do. Okay, so let's say you're doing copper on copper or whatever. Or let's say, let's say one of the surfaces is copper. Let's say this IHS is copper, okay? And you're pulling liquid metal off of it. And then let's say this much of the IHS has absorbed liquid metal you can lap the surface until it's smooth again but it's still silver on top so like the pores of the copper are still full of of liquid metal but you've lapped it now it's kind of like a pseudo nickel plating yes and then when you do nickel when you do liquid metal again it will still absorb, but not as much. And then you might get away with three or four months before it dries out. I've done that too. I used to do that shit all the time too. When I used to do double copper surfaces, I would coat the shit out of it and relap it. Try and like DIY nickel plate. Oh yeah, dude. Well, let me catch up here. It's just, it's just varying degrees of hassle of what you're okay dealing with the older i get the less i'm willing to deal with hassle wise man i don't give a fuck about that shit anymore i just go for nickel plating on both sides now and i just throw liquid metal on it and i don't bother with that shit you know what i mean let me catch up here um there's the liquid metal talk that i wanted to say so to all those people in the discord that were like um, why doesn't Jufus recommend using copper on, uh, or liquid metal on copper? That's why. It's just a hassle, man. And if you don't know what you're doing and you don't want to sand that shit down every time, it's just a hassle, man. 